Um, hey, I want to continue talking uh, about what we started talking about last week. Last week, we finished with a question, and the question was this. We're beginning to talk about hearing the voice of God or discerning the voice of God. I believe that God is speaking to us a lot more than we acknowledge and understand. Part of the reason is we're very distracted in our culture and very distracted in our day, and we've perhaps lost the ability to discern what is the voice of God and what is not the voice of God. But I do believe that God speaks to us. So last week, we began a bit of a journey for a few weeks where we're looking at some of the things, possible reasons why you may be struggling to hear the voice of God in your own life. And last week, we started with a foundational question, and that foundational question was this, do you want to hear what God wants to say to you, or do you want God to say to you what you want to hear? I'll say it again, do you actually want to hear what God wants to say to you, or do you want God to say to you what you want to hear? Now, last week I asked each of you to do something. I asked you to think about that question for the week. How many of you know it can be so easy to come along to a gathering like this and and hear somebody preaching or teaching or whatever and get up and by the time you are sitting in that car, if your husband or wife or kids or best friend or somebody said to you, so what was the message about again today? Be honest, a lot of us would go, oh, hang on. (laughs) I mean, it happened three minutes ago, I can't remember. I can't remember what I said two minutes ago, so I'm not having a go at anybody. But the reality is that when God speaks to us or when we get into the Word of God, it's never just for information's sake, is it? God didn't just give us this to say, hey, there's another book to read. No, no, no. Jesus actually said at one point, I think it was in uh, might be Matthew 6 somewhere, he said, uh, Matthew 7 actually, he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but not do the things I say? That was his way of saying it's incongruent to say I'm your Lord, but not actually do what I say. You can't have one without the other. If you're calling me Lord but not doing what I'm saying, then you're only calling me Lord. I'm really not. Because part of this journey of life and part of what Jesus came was not just to give people a bunch of information so we could say, wow, Jesus, you're really smart. You really understand the times, Jesus. You understand the culture. You, you really understand the Old Testament and the Word of God, Jesus. You, no, no, he came to, give us a, uh, uh, to speak to us about God and the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God operates down here on earth and how we participate in that and how we should live our lives while we're down here. So there's a practical side to what Jesus taught, not just all spiritual information in the sky. So I'm going to ask you again, do you want to hear what God wants to say to you Or do you want God to say to you what you want to hear? Because until we've really answered that question and wrestled with that question, I think it's always going to be hard to hear from God. Because wanting to hear what God wants to say to me is an act of surrender. It's, It's coming to a place in my life where I make the decision to surrender the entirety of my life to the Lordship of Jesus. And that's what discipleship is. It's that journey of getting to that place where we genuinely can surrender. And those two things, we don't like to hear them. If I'm brutally honest, I don't like to hear them. I'm a pastor. I hate those two concepts. Number one, surrendering the entirety of my life. Oh, you know, I'm I'm not dumb. I know how some things work. I think I've got a pretty good idea of, you know. But unfortunately, I serve a God who sees way more than I do, is way smarter than me, and understands things way better than I do. And, and it makes sense for me to surrender, not just the bits of my life. You know, remember that old song, I surrender all. Remember that song? Old hymn, listening to I surrender all. Yeah, yeah, I surrender a tenth. It just wouldn't have the same ring, would it? Yet if we're honest, we've all got our, our, our percentage, don't we? I surrender 38.2%. God, I surrender all. 382 surrender to you. I surrender, I surrender 38.2%. It's a mess. Surrender all sounds better. And surrender all is the goal of the Christian life. That's, that's where we want to go. We want to get to that point where we're surrendering the entirety of our lives to God. And the other part of that statement I don't like is the concept of the Lordship of Christ. If I'm brutally honest, I like to be my own Lord at times. So anyone else with me, you like to be your own Lord? Yeah, there's two people that are being honest in the room. The rest of you, you guys, you should be preaching up here because you're way more spiritual than I am. <laughs> Surrendering the entirety of my life and actually believing, not just in word, but, but exposing through my life and the choices I make that, you know what, Jesus really is my Lord. He really is my Lord. I love him as a saviour. We all want Jesus to be our saviour because we're sinners and we need saving and we can't save ourselves. And so Jesus died upon that cross, took the punishment for sin upon himself so that we could put our faith in him, accept what he did was for us, and we could be free. So we all want Jesus Christ the saviour. 
but Jesus came and spoke of himself also of being the Lord. And so answering this question and learning to hear the voice of God and obey the voice of God and so on, it's all part of the process of learning to surrender the entirety of our lives over to the Lordship of Christ. And that's the direction that we're heading in. So what I want to do this week is we're going to jump forward a little bit. And I told you I've got about 10 reasons. About 10 reasons, I reckon, broad-brushed reasons as to why some of us possibly struggle to hear the voice of God in our life. And so what we're going to do this today, I'm just going to go quickly through the first three of those reasons. And I want you just to sit there and open your heart and just ask the Holy Spirit, is there anything in here for me, God? Uh, the reason I'm asking you that question last week of, about, surrend- about do you want to hear what God wants to say to you or do you want God to say to you what you want to hear is because that's the very thing that the Lord spoke to me about while I was on holidays. He asked me that question while I was on holidays, and I thought, God, I don't want to think that deeply. I'm on holiday. You know? It's my time. I'm on my time now. And God breaks through that and goes, Alan, I really do want to speak to you about some areas of your life, stuff you're struggling with, things that are going on. I want to speak to you about church. I want to speak about all these things, but do you want to hear what I want to say to you? Or do you just want me to say what you want to hear? So I wrestled with that question, and, and uh, I'm still wrestling with it, but I can certainly say I came to a bit of a point of surrender over the course of our holiday. And I've been, to be honest with you, it's been a gr- I've had a great week this week. M- m- the practicalities of life have not been perfect, but I've felt a much closer communion with God and much more clarity around hearing the voice of God and, and being led by God's Spirit this week. And it's been beautiful, and I'm praying that continues on. So I want to talk for the remainder of our time this morning, 10 possible reasons you may be struggling to hear from God. Reason number one, you don't believe it's possible to hear from Him. You don't believe that it's possible to actually hear from God. Now, that sounds really silly to some people because some people, we, you believe that God speaks, but there's a lot of people within the Christian space, they're genuinely saved, they're going to heaven, have a relationship with God filled with the Holy Spirit, but don't believe that God speaks anymore. There are some doctrines out there, teachings that when the, once the Bible was closed off and the last of the, these writings was done, that God chose no longer to speak and the only possible way that it can speak to us is through a passage or a verse in the Bible. Now the problem with that is I couldn't find a verse in there that said thou shalt marry Jacqueline Munster. She, yeah, you wrote it in there though. It wasn't there before you. She's, for my wife so loved me that she added a scripture verse. Thou shalt marry Jackie. But God still speaks to us today. In John 10, 27, Jesus said this. He said, my sheep, what? Listen to my voice. My sheep listen to my voice. And then he said this, why do they listen to his voice? Why do his sheep listen? The New King James says, my sheep hear my voice. Why is it that the sheep of God, the followers of Jesus, why is it that we can hear the voice of God? Why is it that we have the capacity to listen to the voice of God? He goes on, he says, here's why. Because I know them and they follow me. I know them. Anyone remember that story in Matthew Chapter 7, where Jesus, actually I just quoted a second ago, where Jesus says, uh, people came to him and they said, um, uh, you know, don't we, uh, we cast out demons in your name or we raise the dead in your name and heal the sick in your name. And Jesus says to them, what, depart from me, I never knew you. So Jesus made a, a, a bit of a, a, a category of people. There's a bunch of people that he was confident to say, we don't know each other. We've got no relationship with each other. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what miracles you're claiming. I don't care what prophetic utterances you're speaking. I don't care what you've got right. I don't know you. But here he's saying there's going to be a bunch of people that are going to hear my voice and those people are going to be those who know me and I know them. Now, the, the, the concept of knowledge, the concept of know, that Greek word is not know as in I have information about them. How many of you know it's one thing to know about a person, another thing to know a person? I know about a lot of famous people. But I'm not going to say I know those people. I've never met a lot of those people, you know. So there's a difference between knowing something about and actually knowing. And the Greek concept of the word know here, it's the same word that's used when it speaks of Joseph and Mary. When, when Mary was found to be pregnant, the Holy Spirit came upon her. She was pregnant with Jesus. And it says, Joseph, he never knew her. Now, we all know what that's speaking of, don't we? It's speaking of a, 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 a physical sexual intimacy between those two. And that's the same word. It's that picture of intimacy, not just I have information about, but there's a picture there of a level of intimacy and connection between the two parties. And so Jesus is saying here that if you know me, in other words, if you are uh, are born again and you're walking for me and living for me and genuinely repentant of your sins and turned your life over, he said, here's what I'm going to tell you. You do hear me. You can hear me. 
You can hear me. Now, I've got this car. I bought a car off my uncle some time back. And um, in the car, I've, there's this little thing called a CB radio. Anyone got a CB radio in their car? Yep, look, it's just show for me. I've never used it. But, you know, I feel like a man having a CB radio in a car, you know. Um, so anyway, the CB radio is there. Some of you might not have a CB radio, but you've got this thing called a radio. Anyone got a radio in their car? Yep. And because you have that radio, you can dial a, a tune and press a button and you can pick up things that without that you wouldn't be able to pick up. Is that right? Take the radio out and you can't pick up those things. Even though Triple J is running in and out your, your windows and even though there are people arguing and all these things are happening, it's like being at home. There's cowboys and Indians running all around my lounge room but I haven't got my TV on. But if I put a TV and flick a switch, I capture all that and I can see what's actually going on. It's all there. The noise is there. We just need something to pick it up. And, and these days, I, I would dare say it's true, I haven't bought a brand new car ever in my life, but I'm assuming every brand new car comes now standard with a radio in it. Would that be fair to say? Anyone bought a new car recently? They all come standard with a radio. It's a part of what they're made with. It's, they're equipped with the capacity to pick up those tunes. Well, let me tell you this, as a believer, you are equipped with the capacity to hear from God. Amen. You are inbuilt, you are built with the capacity, you have been given everything you need to hear from God. The thing is learning to discern what is the voice of God and separate the voice of God and the leading of His Spirit from all those other voices. But we are actually uh, uh, inbuilt, have the capacity to actually hear from God. I don't care whether you're 88 years of old in this room or whether you're 8 years of age. We have the capacity because our Father said that my sheep who know me, they hear me. I speak to them and I lead them. And, and Jesus even spoke of that even after he was gone. He wanted his disciples to know and they wrote it down so that you and I would know as well. In John 16, 12 to 13, Jesus said, I have much more to say to you than you can bear now. Ever thought about that? There are things God wants to say to you, but maybe you can't handle them right now. But he wants to say it and at the right time he will. So we've got to keep our ears open and we've got to be listening. He says, there's more things I want to say, and you can't bear them now, but when he, the spirit of truth, speaking of the Holy Spirit, if you're in this room and you've given your life over to Jesus, the promise of the spirit is yours. You have the Holy Spirit. He said, the spirit of truth, when he comes, he said what? He will guide you into all truth, and he'll not speak on his own. He'll speak only what he hears, and he'll tell you what is yet to come. So Jesus said, even when I'm gone, I'm not physically here, you can still expect that God, it might not be through me physically, but God will continue to speak to you through the vehicle of the Holy Spirit. He will be hearing things from heaven, and he'll be dropping them into your spirit, and he'll be speaking to you. And he'll lead you, and he'll guide you. And there are ways that he does that. I'm not talking about that right now. I just want us to understand that everybody in this room, you have the capacity to hear from your heavenly father. God spoke to Ananias, just in case anyone's sitting there going, yeah, that's okay, that was the 12 disciples and so on. Well, if you go into Acts chapter 9, God speaks to this guy called Ananias and says, Ananias, you know that guy, Saul, that was killing Christians and everything like that? I've appeared to him, I want you to go and pray for him. Now, this guy's not a bigwig, but God speaks to him. Later on in Acts chapter 10, uh, God appears to Cornelius, a, a devout Gentile. And he has a vision, says, go and find Peter and bring him and, and he'll explain to you the, the way of God and so on. So right throughout, not only the Gospels, do we hear God speaking through the mouth of Jesus, but we also see in the book of Acts and right through into the letters that people speaking, saying, this is what the Holy Spirit has been speaking to us. This is what the Spirit is saying to us. So we have the capacity to hear. Romans 8 and verse 14, Paul writes, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Now, you can break that down. What does it mean to be led? All I know is this. To be led, I have to be getting some kind of communication in order to follow. And God wants to communicate with us. And Paul says here in Romans that one of the marks of a child of God is that we have the inbuilt capacity to receive communication and to be led, whether that be through the written Word of God or whether it be through the leading and the directing of the Holy Spirit. And don't sit there and panic about that. We'll go a bit further with that later on. So reason number one why maybe you're struggling to hear the voice of God, maybe you don't believe it's possible to hear him. Reason number two why you may not believe it's possible to hear the voice of God. Because you don't know what he sounds like. You don't know what he sounds like. There was a, I read a story the other day and a guy's in a locker room full of men. It was a men's locker room and a cell phone rings and he picks up this cell phone and the conversation goes like this. He says, hello. There's a woman at the other end. She says, hi, honey, it's me. Are you at the club? 
He says, yep. Woman says, I'm at the mall and I just saw this beautiful leather coat and it's only $2,000. Can I have it? Yeah, of course. He says, sure. And the woman says, oh, and I just stopped by the Lexus dealership and saw the one I really, really liked. Can I have it? The guy says, how much is it? The woman says, well, it's $90,000. The man says, well, if it's that much, I want it with all the features. The woman says, of course. Oh, by the way, one more thing. I just finished talking to Sarah and the house I wanted is back on the market. They're asking $980,000 for it. The man says, okay, make an offer for 900000 If they don't take it, offer them an extra 80000 if that's what you really want. Woman says, thank you so much, honey. Love you. Bye. The man says, I love you too. Bye. Hangs up the phone. After he hangs up the phone, everyone in the locker room is just staring at him in astonishment. The man then calmly looked around and asked, okay, whose phone's this? <laughs> it pays to know the sound of your husband's voice, ladies. And to everybody in this room... Even more so, it pays to know the voice of God when he speaks to us, when he says things to us. Now, here's the thing, just a little bit of an experiment here. To some of the really older, older generation in this room, you may think that God sounds like this. Anyone know who that is? Charlton Heston. That's right. Now, even though Charlton Heston played Moses, here's a bit of trivia for you, he played Moses in the Ten Commandments, Charlton Heston was also the voice of God at the burning bush scene. Did you know that? While Charlton Heston is Moses, he's speaking to himself. He's the burning bush voice as well in that movie. So some of the older generation, when you think of the voice of God, it's probably got an accent that sounds a little bit like Charlton Heston. If you're a little bit younger than that, maybe, not quite as young as me, but a little bit younger than that, maybe the voice of God sounds like this next gentleman. Remember George Burns? I remember the Oh God series. There was two or three Oh God films, and George Burns played a a slightly off-center, off-kilter version of God. In those, now if you're younger than that still, and you're uh, uh, probably me and under, or probably a bit under me, maybe to you, you think that God sounds like this person. Ah, see, I think that's God. Yeah, Morgan Freeman. Whenever I hear God, it sounds like Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman played a great God character in the, what are they, the Bruce Almighty and, and what's Evan Almighty films. If you haven't seen them, great, great family films. Good, good, good messages in them too. But... The reality of the fact is that he sounds a lot like another figure who's never had his face on the big screen because there were actually no big screens around when he was there. Anyone know who I'm talking about? I'll give you a tip. It rhymes with Jesus. (laughs) Jesus, exactly. God sounds a lot like Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. The writer of Hebrews says this. It says, In the past... God spoke to our ancestors, how? Through prophets at many times and in various ways. But then he goes on, he says, but in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the whole universe. He says there was a period where God spoke primarily through prophets. Remember, in the, anyone ever heard that phrase, don't touch the Lord's anointed? Ever heard that? Yeah, well, in the Old Testament, the, the, the anointing of God would come upon people and then would leave people. It was like a yo-yo, up, down, up, down, depending on how you were carrying on and so on. And kings were anointed and priests were anointed and prophets were anointed and so on. But then the anointing of God could be taken away from them and so on. And so in times past, God uh, anointed people and God spoke through people. And then the writer here says that God used to speak through prophets. Moses was a prophet and, and, and all. And God spoke. But he said in these last days, God is speaking to us in a different way now. He says God is actually speaking to us through the life and teachings of his son, Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not anti-prophecy, I'm not anti-prophets. I still believe in prophets, I still believe in prophecy. But I'm not running around chasing what a prophet has to say to me. What I'm doing is I'm chasing after Jesus Christ. Amen? I'm going after Jesus. I want to hear what Jesus has to say. I want to know about Jesus. I want to get into this collection of ancient documents and, and, and learn about the character and the nature of Jesus. Understand the teachings of Jesus. Understand the perspectives of Jesus. God speaks to us primarily through his son, Jesus Christ. And the last days that the writer's talking about, anyone remember that great passage in the book of Acts, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 16, where Peter gets up, the Holy Spirit falls, and Peter says, this is what Joel spoke in the what? Last days. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. And the writer here in Hebrews is saying, in the last days, the primary way God's going to speak to us is he's going to speak to us through his son. He's going to speak to us through his son. So Jesus is God's prophetic word to us. You want to know what God is saying in the last days? 
get acquainted with what Jesus taught us. Get acquainted with the words of Jesus. Jesus speaks God's word, God's word, and Jesus also displayed the character and the nature of God. You want to know what God is like. Colossians 1.15 says that Jesus, the Son, is the image of the invisible God. You want to understand more about Jesus. You want to know what, 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 what God is saying and what God looks like. Look at Jesus. Listen to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Now, let me share one other thing with you, a little side issue here about this little collection of ancient documents we have called the Bible. Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to 3 tells us this. Luke writes to a guy called Theophilus. He says, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them. Watch this, gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days. So for 40 days after his resurrection, for 40 days, Jesus hung out with a bunch of people and, and, and they're written up here as, uh, as uh, disciples, apostles, those that followed him. It, and and um, uh, where are you? Brendan pointed out this morning from 1 Corinthians where Paul writes that he actually appeared to 500 other people as well as proof. Jesus appeared to a lot of people. If this thing is not true, uh, then the writers should not have added that stuff because a lot of these people could have been verified very easily. Give me two names of the 500 and I'll go and check it out. They didn't care. They weren't trying to hide anything or cover anything up because it was true. It was 100% true. But he says here that he appeared after and he spoke to them for 40 days. And what did he speak to them about? It says there, the kingdom of God. So there's a whole bunch of things that these uh, ancient writers and that were spoken to and told about. For 40 days, it says he spoke about the kingdom of God. And I think it's fairly fair to say that the topic of that teaching was very possibly how this thing called the church, how these disciples should live in this season called the last days. And probably, probably, possibly, a lot of that teaching and stuff that he taught them has been recorded in the letters and the other things in here that were written down. Jesus also said, do you remember about the Holy Spirit? He said to his disciples, he said, when he comes, he'll bring back to your remembrance everything I taught you. Do you remember that passage? Everything I've taught you, I'll bring it back to your remembrance. Why? Because one day, you're going to be writing all this down because I'm going to preserve. I, can't, I don't walk with Jesus physically now, and I don't see him physically now. But the Holy Spirit knew, but we're going to preserve the teachings. I'm, I'm going to allow you to hear him and see him through his word. I'm going to allow you to hear Jesus and see Jesus through the teachings in this collection of ancient documents that we have called the Bible. He still speaks to us. In its simplest form, what does God's voice sound like? It sounds like Jesus. It's that voice that speaks hope to you when you believe there isn't any hope. It's that voice that speaks encouragement when you're racked with despair. It's the voice that says you have value when everything around you is saying you're worthless. It's that voice that comes into alignment with the nature and character of your gracious Heavenly Father when other voices are calling you to run outside those lines. What does God sound like? He sounds like Jesus. You know, I was president for about 12 years. I was the president of the Ballina Touch Football Association. Stepped back a couple of years ago. I'm vice president now. But for 12 years, I was the president. And I remember one day an email came out. Remember that? An email was sent apparently from me to the entire committee saying... Um, oh, we've got this bank account and I quickly need money put into this account uh, because we've got this thing and I'll explain it to you at the next meeting, right? Now, you're already sitting there probably realising that sounds very dodgy. Well, it was very dodgy. But this email went out with my email address and everything. Somebody had hacked into my account and had emailed... The, the, my wife was the secretary, I think, at the time and emailed the treasurer and so on. And, it, and my wife was very quick to get on the phone and say, Alan, you better have a look, there's an email here. And she said this to me. She said, when I read that, she said straight away, because I know you, I knew that wasn't you. Because I know you, Alan, I know how you speak, I know how you think, I know who you are, I picked up straight away, I knew that email is not from my husband. And very quickly, I was able to shoot an email out to everybody and say, ignore that, it's not me, I've been hacked, and so on. But that's what happens when you know someone, when you get to know someone. You begin to discern and understand, not just... So this wasn't even a spoken voice. But she just knew that I'm not, I don't word things that way. I don't do things like that. It's not my nature to do that. I, I don't operate that way. And as she's got to know me, she picked that up straight away. And so it is with hearing the voice of God. So the first reason why you may be struggling, may be struggling, not saying you are, may be struggling to hear the voice of God. Number one, you don't believe it's possible to hear him. And then reason number two, you don't know what he sounds like. And the last one I want to mention this morning 
Last reason why you possibly may not be hearing from God is this. Maybe you are hearing, but you're afraid to acknowledge that it could actually be him. Maybe you actually are hearing from God, but you're afraid to acknowledge that that's possibly God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 to 6. The writer says this, Have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his sons? And he goes on, he says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Have you ever thought about that? Sometimes we talk about the love of God and how much God loves, and he does, and I, I, I can't express the love of God more, but part of, the part of love is rebuke and discipline, isn't it? I love my children. So as they were growing up, because I loved them, I rebuked and disciplined them in the appropriate times. It was always done for their betterment, for their good. And God is exactly the same with us. And we don't ever want to get so absorbed with the love of God that we lose the bigger picture of what love actually looks like. There are times where God rebukes us. There are times where God speaks to us and says things to us that we flat out just simply don't want to hear. He says things that we just don't want to hear. Ever had God say something to you that you just did not want to hear? If you have, be encouraged. At least you're open enough to hear it in the first place. But sometimes God will say things to us because he cares for us enough, he'll tell us things at times that we don't want to hear. You remember Peter tried to say to Jesus that you're going to deny me three times. Peter then tried to return, serve and say to Jesus, ah, you're wrong. The rest of them will run from you, but I'll die for you because I'm better than everybody else. And then not long after, we hear, kaka, kaka, kaka. <laughs> guess who was right? Jesus wasn't trying to be mean, wasn't trying to be harsh with him. He was just letting him know, hey, I know your heart. I know the pressure you're going to be under. I know it's going to happen. But I also know at the other end of it, you're going to come through this. I know you're going to come through. And when you do, remember, feed my sheep. And Peter went on to be a great pillar of the church. There's a woman, and she's dragged before Jesus by a bunch of religious leaders about to get stoned. And Jesus, very smart, very clever, says, okay, no worries. That's what the law says. We can stone you. So whoever has no sin, I want you to pick up the first stone. Let's get the show going. And they all realized, hang on a second, Jesus knows we've got stuff too. One by one, it says they dropped their stones and they walked away. But Jesus still turned around to the woman and said, hey, go and sin no more. Don't do it again. Get help, whatever. Not making excuses. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm saying to you, I've just saved you from the punishment and penalty of what you deserved legally by law, but I'm saying to you, I'm encouraging you, I'm saying, I want you to go and not do it again. I wonder how she felt standing there, such relief when the stones were dropped and everyone walked away. Then she looked at Jesus and here the Son of God looks her in the eye and says, you are a sinner. Stop it. Sometimes he says things that we don't want to hear. It tells us that Jesus wept over Jerusalem and he wept over the people of Jerusalem. That included the religious leaders whom he incredibly loved. At the same time, he didn't mind looking them in the eye and saying, you brood of vipers, you hypocrites. He didn't mind doing it. Did he love them? Of course he did. He was motivated by love in everything that he did. And sometimes God might want to say things to us that we don't want to hear. Maybe the price of obedience is too high for you. So we don't want to acknowledge that this might be God. I shared that story last week about that friend of ours. She thought she had found true love, always wanted true love, thought she had found true love. But it wasn't true love. And God was trying to speak to her and say, this relationship is no good. But you know what? I can imagine in her heart, she's thinking, but you know what? Relationships for her, relationships aren't coming across me every couple of weeks. If I don't take this one, who knows when I might get another, maybe I won't get another chance at this. Maybe sometimes the price of acknowledging that is God is too high because once we acknowledge it's God, then we put ourselves in a position where we go, okay, now I have to respond because I'm admitting this could be this God. Well, I need to count the cost. And maybe the price of obedience is too high, so we just don't want to admit or accept that what we're hearing, it probably, possibly could be God. Maybe we just simply don't like the answer that he gives us. There was a man once, he said, God, what's a million years to you? And God said, a minute. Then the man said, well, what's a million dollars to you? And God said, a penny. Then the man said, God, can I have a penny? And God smiled and said, in a minute. (laughs) Or maybe we're afraid of being led astray by simply obeying voices. We've all seen people that have been led astray by voices. 
I've shared many times a story here of a good mate of ours, youth pastor, uh, working alongside of us when we were youth pastors and started hearing voices and so on and ended up in a loony bin, ended up in a straitjacket because he followed these voices and these things down paths that they shouldn't go. And maybe some of us are afraid to open ourselves up to actually admitting that, yeah, I think God is speaking to me and I think God might be saying to me because we're afraid of being led astray. But here's the thing, God's given us barriers that keep us on track. He will never go outside of his character. He will not contradict his word. He will not divide his body. And he will not fail to confirm through accountability. He'll confirm to us. If you're wrestling uh, with something and God's saying something, I've always had this theory that the higher the price of obedience, the more that God generally tends to confirm. If God was to say to me, I want you to go and give $5 to Daniel, I wouldn't need any confirmation anywhere else. I'd just go and do that. But if he said to me, I want you to pack up your house and move to China, take your family, you're going to be missionaries, well, God, I'm, I'm wanting a few more confirmations along the way there because the price of that is going to be quite high. And I'm not just talking about my own life, perhaps at the hands of my own family. So there's three reasons, potentially, maybe why you might be struggling to hear the voice of God. Maybe, reason number one, maybe you don't believe that God, it's possible to hear. I hope that you can see that it is very, very possible. And not only possible, but very likely that you are. Number two, you don't know what he sounds like. Well, can I encourage you, get to know Jesus and you'll get to know what God sounds like. Look at Jesus, get into his word. This is like railway tracks. They're like tracks. God will not stray outside of it. Don't be afraid. Some of us have more faith in the devil's ability to deceive us than we do in God's ability to keep us on track. We have more faith in the devil's ability to take us sideways than we do in the Holy Spirit and God's ability to keep us on track. I am, I am open to hearing from God because I trust my heavenly Father loves me enough to keep me on point and to, to let me know if I'm getting sidetracked or getting a little bit freaky or a little bit weird. Don't be afraid of the devil. Love God and be in awe at the mighty power and love of a God that loves you. Number two, you don't know what he sounds like. And finally, the last one, last reason why you may be struggling, you are actually hearing, but you're afraid to acknowledge that it could be God. Maybe one of those things is you this morning. If not, we've got another seven to go over the next few weeks. But I'm hoping and praying out of this season that what we do is we begin to open ourselves up more and more to the leading of God's Spirit and to the voice of God. Jesus said in John 6, 63, the words I speak to you, he said they're unlike any words anyone's ever spoken to you before. He said the words I speak to you are spirit and the words I speak to you are life. And God wants to give us life. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord. Thank you, God. What a great uh, opportunity to gather together, to hang out together, to get into your word, Father. What a great opportunity to worship you. Lord, as we leave this place this morning, God, Lord, I pray that you would teach us how do we stay under the water? How do we stay in this kind of an environment? How do we stay attuned to your spirit? How do we stay excited about the things of God? How do we, how do we keep ourselves in that place, Lord, where we know that we know that we know, no matter what we're doing, where we go, the creator of the universe is right there with us. And Lord, I pray for those that you're speaking to at the moment, God, if there are people here struggling to discern, to hear the voice of God, Lord, would you just over these few weeks, just speak gently to their hearts, God. You're a father, speak to them in a way that gets their attention. You know how to get our attention, God. Would you please do it? Open us up to the possibility that the creator of the universe wants to speak to us, wants to communicate with us because he loved us. God, if you died for us, then surely, surely you want to speak to us. And Father, in the next seven days as we leave this place, I pray give each one in this room, give us a chance to bump into somebody out there, God. There are people in our community that do not have hope, do not have faith, do not see a way forward, do not know how to get out of the holes and the pits that they're in. Lord, we know that Jesus is the answer. So God, would you give us an opportunity in the next seven days to share the goodness of God, uh, the goodness of Jesus, the love of God with people out there that are yet to know it. Father, would you use us and give us those opportunities, Father? We ask it in Jesus' name. Together we all said... Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. We've got some morning tea there, tea and coffee. Hey, just one last thought. If you feel like God's been speaking to you, 
Why don't you grab somebody, maybe somebody you know or somebody next to you, someone you're comfortable with, and why don't you say straight away to them, before I get up and go and have one of uh, those lovely bits of food over there, a piece of Sue's quiche, which just takes everything away from you and you get absorbed in the culinary world of Sue's quiche, before that happens, I want to share with you, here's what I believe the Holy Spirit said to me, would you pray for me right now? Let's, let's pray together over that. Let's seal that word in Jesus' name. Yep, is that good? Owen thinks it's good. The rest of you, do whatever you want. Bless you guys.